afternoon. Welcome to The Real Men of Real Estate here on KCAA Radio. You can find us on your dial at 1050 AM or 106.5 FM. I'm your host, Dan Reddig, for the third Sunday uh, of every month. And today I've got the distinct pleasure of having Janice Bell with us. Uh, we're going to be talking about the five keys to funding your real estate investments and where you can find a lot of hidden money that maybe you didn't know about. So Janice, welcome. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. It's a, truly a pleasure. So I just wanted to take a quick minute and, and help our listeners get to know you. So could you just kind of tell us the your real estate investing history? How did you get into it and, and what have you done? All right. Thank you. Um, I kept my first condo. Like There you go. Uh, there, there's how to get started. So I've Accidental been a landlord. landlord. Yeah. I kept it, rented it out when I bought my first house. So keep stuff because it you know, you got a really good loan on that probably as a, as an owner versus an investor. Absolutely. Um, so I've been a landlord for 34 years, hate to admit all that, but um, during the, and I've land, been a landlord for multiple different kinds of uh, projects. So apartment buildings, smaller uh, multi-units, and then as well, later got into flipping houses Okay. and some wholesaling, um, Airbnb. I mean, basically I'll rent anything, right? So um Flipping. I'm trying to think of what, yeah, apartment buildings and then ma- learning how to manage that and learn, learning how to manage the property managers, learning yep. how to run contracting teams. Um, mm-hmm. This house behind me is a house that we staged on one of our flips up in Sacramento. So okay, um, staging helped sell the house better, you know. Always. Yeah. All right. Well, that's fascinating. So as that's gone on, I think maybe the biggest secret to what you've done is trying to find money, right? It's, you can find the deals, but where, how do you fund it? So what led you there? What led you towards focusing on trying to raise capital? Well, uh, two things, actually, for the, the average real estate investor, you will run out of your own money. It's, it's almost better if you didn't have any to start with. So when people have their own, they invest their own, and then they hit that wall of, well, I want to buy more deals, but they don't have the funds to do it. Then right. they have to learn how to raise it. If you didn't start with any, you're learning how to raise money right away. So that's that's very helpful. So that was one of the impetuses of how can I do more deals and raise money with other people's money and help them learn how to make a better return by investing their money. The okay. second one was um, I worked for one of the gurus as a coach. And uh, they I during that time, coached probably over 250 students across the oh, country. Oh, wow. Wow. So on like, they have a six month coaching program. So sometimes I was coaching like 20 to 40 people a month, right? In their, in their calls. Um, and I found that there were two things that they needed that they didn't have. One is they needed access to deals. And the reason I'm making my finger go around is they would chase their tail. I don't oh, have okay. deals. So I said, well, I taught them how to go get deals. And sure. then- they would come back two weeks later and say, I said, did you, did you go through the protocol I gave you to look for some deals? And they go, no, cause you know, I don't have any money. So I didn't look for mm-hmm. deals. And I said, okay, well, let me teach you how to like look for money. So let's go on that. And then two weeks later, they come on their call and say, well, I didn't look for money cause I don't have any deals. Right. And this was the, the just chasing classic the classic chicken and egg. Yeah. Right. Never did so, anything cause I can't do the next thing. And there's lots and lots of clubs that teach you how to find deals, how to market, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. wholesaling and things like that. So what I wanted to focus on uh, for myself and, and, and my club and my coaching is teaching people how to raise the money because it seems like there was less um, information about that. You often hear some of the bigger um, investors up on stage and uh, they will say, oh, I have this one investor with millions and I, they just fund everything for me. I hear that a lot. Yeah. And so That's the a very tough relationship goes, to get set up. <laughs> the average person goes, I don't know that how to find that person. And what if that, and I've, I've seen this happen to people that one person goes away. Now you still don't mm-hmm. know how to raise money. So what I like to teach people how to do is how to raise money from a variety of different people and different sources so that you kind of have some backup and you might hit the whale eventually, but you're not totally dependent on that one whale um, to do that. What's what it's led me to in my career at this point is to start focusing more and more on raising the money in a syndication type style oh, okay. for someone who's really specializing their operations 
in one particular kind of real estate. And I'm the one specializing in raising the money from different people who want to invest and who aren't don't have the time because of their job or the know-how yet, no know-how yet to do the deal themselves. I see. So they kind of earn while they learn. In a okay, way. I was just going to ask if how inter interactive is that project like or program? Yeah, it depends on the operator, you know, okay. who's doing the deal. I mean, you can get some information from them, but at least you know how the deal's structured. You're going through the process of, mm -hmm. of doing that. And then right. on a smaller scale, people do, they lend on one flip and that's a deed of trust basically to one person doing a house. And a lot of people start that way um, or they then put money into a syndication where you're raising a million dollars and they only put in 50 or 25,000 and with a lot of people. And that's what's called a syndication. Got it. All right. So a lot of ways to do it, but you've got something pretty specific that works for Works for not a lot just, of people. Not, not just you, but for general investors, there's an easy way, relatively easy I, way. How about I that? <laughs> so part of it is if someone wants to learn how to raise it, raise money themselves, really, I'm going to coach you through the things, to, your mindset about mm -hmm. it, and then the things to say Most to important specific part. <laughs> people. And I'm also going to coach you on what kinds of people to start with uh -huh. and then practice, practice, practice. You know, you're practicing in a mirror, you're, you're recording yourself, you're figuring out what you look like and sound like when you talk to someone about money. Mm -hmm. And that has to be a mindset shift. Got you, it. What I have to say is you're not asking for money. And that's where most people come from is like, I'm asking for money. My parents told me not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> right. And so <laughs> right. it's just even it's in the sound awkward of conversation, their, even the sound of their voice is, is off when they do that. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we have to switch your whole mindset about what you're offering to people as opposed to asking. Got it. All right. So of these five keys, where do you want to start? Oh, five keys. All right. So keys to how to use money that you didn't know you had yeah. or how to find money that other people didn't know they had. For All of real the above. Estate. Yeah. Yeah. How, yeah. How can I fund my real estate investments? <laughs> I know you've got five keys for doing that. Exactly. Exactly. So the first one I'll say, the easiest one is find any and all of your old 401ks from your previous jobs. So every time you leave an employer, um, your 401k is now available for you to self-direct. And most people don't know this. Um, they okay. leave they leave that account sitting there in whatever mutual funds your previous employer had invested in, and they don't really do anything with it. Um, so they end up with these various accounts hosted by different different companies. And what's okay. the reason we're not taught that is because really 401ks were set up so Wall Street could gain fees from selling stocks to us or mutual funds. I see. Funds, okay. Right? So it's not they, really in our best interest. It just happens to work out sometimes. Yes. And, you know, they always talk about administration fees for mutual funds. Mm -hmm. And if you if you look on the list of Wall Street, there's, you know, 1.2% or 3% fees or whatever. You can look at that. There's also a an exact duplicate of that fund that's that's sold through 401ks that even has a higher administration fee because they're collecting that from you and the employer and that same fund whether it's i'm not going to say the names of all the different companies you guys know who they are um they have an identical <laughs> fund that goes into your 401k that has a slightly higher rate right of fees than it does when it's on the open market on i see you know, in barons or whatever wherever you want to look it up so you really want to move out and away from those um, the four hundred one k's that right. were handed to you by your employer. Um, and you so when you said self directed, what what is what do you mean by self directed? Because I think that's a lot of that's a big question for a lot of people. Right, exactly. Um, so self directed means you can still invest in stock, but you can also invest in real estate and lots of other things that bring in income to you. Um, there's a few things that are excluded like art, you know, you can't invest in that. Okay. So you can self-direct and choose where those go because in your 401k, there were only so many choices that your employer gave to you and it wasn't the open market. So right. at, yeah. the can minimum, confirm. <laughs> at the minimum, at least, and some people do half and half, they'll take their 401k and say, well, I'm pretty good with stock. So I'm going to put half into a stock fund 
where I can now buy Apple individually instead of within a mutual fund. Or they they say, well, I'm pretty good at real estate and I don't even like stocks. So I'm going to put the whole thing into a self-directed fund um, with a company so I can do real estate investing. And sometimes it's called an SD IRA, but okay. really that just means self-directed, but really it's a traditional IRA. Um, you know, and then that law was, was um, you know, laid out and designed um, back in the seventies and it's, it's just a retirement account. I see. So okay. it's in the IRS code. All right. So if the situation is I leave my current employer, my 401k now is basically hanging. I can convert that to a self-directed and yeah. which I and put that money then towards anything I want, unlike the 401k of maybe a current employer, which is yes, very restrictive. Exactly. Okay. Right, right. Your current right. employer, you can't do much with, but we'll get to that later, what you can do. So okay. you really want to take control. You can roll three or four different. So the, basically you open the account um, with a self-directed company and mm -hmm. then you roll all those other, and there's no tax consequences because um, you really don't touch the money. It uh -huh. gets rolled right. it in. It still stays in the account. Yeah. Right. Right. Because as you know, okay. your, your 401k was a pre-tax contribution. It was put in there without paying any um, income tax on it. So it's going to go into your traditional IRA account as a pre-tax account. And some people think, well, this is just this odd thing that people do. Actually, if you retired from that same employer, the minute you retire officially, your 401k it becomes a, a traditional IRA because it doesn't okay. stay with your employer when you retire. I see. Well, we'll learn more about that when we come back. We're going to take a short break and we'll talk to you guys on the other side. Thanks for listening.